Hey everybody, welcome back to the Bourbon Note. I'm Greg. I'm Ben. And today, we're tackling the new Rift Bourbon. All right, Ben, what do you know about the new Riff? Um, not a ton. I've only had it once, actually. Um, I remember this was one that I kept hearing such good things about. Yep. And I just never got around to buying a bottle of it. For whatever reason, there's just so many out there. there yeah, too many. Somehow this was on my list, and then I almost kind of completely forgot about it. So I picked these up a long time ago, probably two years ago. Did a quick pour with someone else, and then forgot about them. So they've been sitting on the shelf, kind of hidden. And um, I honestly don't remember anything about them. So we're gonna do a little comparison here. We have New Riff Bottle and Bottled Bond. and Bond and New Riff Single Barrel, and that's at cask strength or barrel proof as it says on the- Like 111 point something. I think it's 119. 111.9. Oh, okay. 111.9, well that'll be good. It will be good. So that's just the regular New Riff bourbon. Uh, oh, a bottle bottle. Is there a difference if they have a bourbon and then a Bottled and Bond bourbon? Or? Uh, that I don't know. Um, I forgot oh, I need two glasses here. Oh, well, you probably want some. Yeah, that'll make the review, the review go exciting. a little more smooth for me, anyway. Uh, I knew they, they have a rye. I don't know which one was which here. It's like crossing the streams it in is. Ghostbusters. Well, they're, they're, they're different colors. Something horrible is going to happen. Well, I don't know what that means since I've not... Uh, the Ghostbusters. Is there a new movie coming out? Or is it out? <laughs> Did you just say... We gotta rewind that for a second. I'm not a Ghostbusters fan. Like like you're not a fan or you've never seen it or you saw it and you didn't like it somehow. Well, I certainly saw the original one. You just time. alienated probably most of the people watching this, by the way. I'm just saying. Really? Everybody oh, likes just, Ghostbusters. You think so? Okay, absolutely. Like that's a national treasure of a movie. Just, I don't understand it, I don't know. When was the last time you saw it? 30 years ago. Okay, well, it's good for a rewatch. Okay. Rewatch it before you go watch the new one, which I'm excited about. Okay. Anyway, back anyway, to the bourbon. back to the bourbon. <laughs> so, on the right, we've got the, uh, the bottled and bond, and then on the left, we've got the barrel-proof single barrel. Yeah. All right, let's see what we got here. Nice toffee notes. Yeah, there's a sweetness there. There's some candy going on. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's rich brown sugar and oak. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of almost a, am I getting a little banana maybe? Thought you were gonna go somewhere else. Not banana, like I'm not getting like an old forester or you know, brown foreman type. Yeah profile, but almost a little something there. I'm getting a note that uh, I'm not going to say until I taste it because it's unique and it's not one I see a lot on bourbons. Okay. Let's, well, let's go in for the, uh, here we go. the bottled and bond here. Yep. It's there. Big time. Boy, that is really cinnamony, spicy, peppery. Graham cracker. Boy, now that you mention it. That's oh, really good. I don't remember this being that good. I could see a graham crackery note, sure. Yeah. But I'm getting a ton of, of spice on this. I, a lot of a lot of spice. It's almost like it's a little blend of all the kind of spices, like the you know, baking spice, it's cinnamon, yep. kind of hot cinnamon. Yep. It's peppery at the same time. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the uh, mash bill is on this. Uh, one of them had some info on it. <laughs> but uh, Maybe it was a different bourbon. Here it is, 65.35. Okay, so we're going high rye there. That's where that spice yep. is coming. I'm not getting as much of like a floral sort of clove note. Mm -mm. Um, you know, maybe on the, the barrel proof one here, I'm gonna go in for that. That is really, really nice on the nose, the barrel proof one, single barrel. So of course, single barrel, these are gonna vary from bottle to bottle, but. Yep. 
they're usually in the general same, you know, playing field. Right. I am getting something on his that I just can't place. I get that one note that I won't mention. The graham cracker again? Nope, not that. There's, I'm getting much more caramel on this, I think. Almost like a, just melted caramel. Hmm. Kind of buttery. All right, I'm going in for the taste here. I'm kind of stuck on one note, so. That's really good. But there's something, I don't mean but in a bad way, but there's something that stands out and it's not just the flavor. There's something about this, it hits your mouth and it's just like this opening up of heat. Well, that's like the alcohol. <coughs> right, but it's not. And it carries the flavor. Yeah, it's, it's so wrapped in flavors that it's not like an alcohol burn necessarily. Right. It's like, a, and I'm getting a, a ton of cinnamon again. Yep. But it's not like, Kind of hard to explain. It's almost like a red hot or like an atomic fireball hmm. in the heat of it. Okay. You know? Yeah. I mean, the cinnamon, it's not like a punch you in the face cinnamon. It's just an all around spice. Yeah. But like some of those like fall spices and stuff like that. This is excellent. I really like this. Both of these. This one, the, the single barrel, I am getting the Play-Doh note. Are you really? I am. I got a little bit on the nose, but I definitely get it on the... See, now that you say that, uh, we were, did a review not that long ago. And actually, we did, this was off camera because it was during a flight. Oh, and we yeah. didn't put the flight in the video. Okay. But we got a Play-Doh note on a certain bourbon that we both really, really like. Yep. And I still like it, and I'd never gotten that before, and now it's there every time I drink it. And what is a Play-Doh note? I mean, we've all smelled Play-Doh. Yeah. And, and hopefully you haven't tasted it, but you know what it tastes like based on the smell. I'm sure I ate it at some point <laughs> as a kid. You know, even after saying it though, I'm not really getting that on this one. This is really interesting. This is just a great balance of it's, a ton of flavors. I think it's so many flavors going on here. It's hard to just pick one out, like it's spicy, but I can't tell you exactly what spice it is. It's just sure. a bunch of them all working together, but they yep. work great together. Yeah. You know, there's not, there, you have a bourbon where sometimes the flavors are kind of fighting with each other, mm -hmm. where it's like, it wants to go this direction, but it's being pulled down by this note. And then sometimes on every sip, it's a little different. This is just a nice, really, really well balanced. I'm gonna go back to the bottled and bond and just see if it falls off a cliff. I think this one's a lot sweeter and a lot more approachable. This one's really spicy and has an edge to it. Yeah. This one definitely is not without its edge though. Oh, it, it has some spice. Rice spice, wood spice, alcohol proof. Mm-hmm. 111.9, okay. Yeah, these are just really good. These are definitely not entry level bourbons. Mm -mm. But I remember when I, <coughs> excuse me, when I first kind of started getting into bourbon, and I had already had, you know, I don't know if I maybe gotten too much into the cask strength stuff. I just remember the guy at Total Wine was saying, like, this is, you know, winning all these awards is a couple of years ago. Yeah. And, you know, everybody loves it and this, this, and that. And then I remember they had a sample bottle of it, so I did a sample of it, and I think it was the single barrel, and I had no idea it was 111 proof or whatever. And I remember just being kind of like, oh, okay, that's not really, doesn't really taste like the other bourbons that I'm used to, and I think that's probably why, because I guess I don't know that I ever really knew that this was a barrel proof one right. until today. Yeah. And so looking back on that, that kind of makes sense now, because I remember not disliking it, but not really, you noticed it was different, but you didn't know why. Yeah, there was yeah. something different about it. And it was a little, you know, harsh. Yeah. And obviously that's why, because I just don't think I was ready for that at mm -hmm. that point. So, but yeah, I would definitely recommend both of these. I would say I like the um, Bottled and Bond more, 
Really? There's See, some, I, this one just has, I don't know, it's a little bit edgy. It's interesting, and it's certainly worth taking a taste of. And definitely there's gonna be a lot of people who love it, but mm -hmm. I like this a lot more. I'm going with the single barrel. I think price-wise, it's a couple years ago, but it was like, it was like 50 and 70 maybe. Mm -hmm. It felt like it was in that range. Yeah, I think I remember, I don't know, I think the single barrel, I don't know if it was quite 70s, but it was in the 60. lower 60s if I remember 45 correctly. 45 and 60, I don't know. Um, I'm definitely noticing the graham cracker note a little bit mm -hmm. after you brought it up. What you said, the, the bottled and bond is a little more approachable. Mm -hmm. It's not as sharp. I feel like the bottled and bond, and this is not, this, the bottled and bond's great. I love it. But I feel like there's a sharpness that isn't quite as balanced out. Mm -hmm. Whereas the sharpness on this, where it's a bigger sharpness because of the proof, but it's a little just more balanced out. Now this is a very well balanced bourbon, mm -hmm. but I think the sharpness kind of stands maybe a little bit on its own. Okay. As opposed to this, the sharpness sure. is kind of blended in with everything a little bit more on yeah. the barrel proof. That's fair. But yeah, both of these really good. Oh yeah, very, very impressed with these. Yeah, these are awesome. I'm gonna look for something new from them. So just another expensive bird, well not expensive, but mid-price. Mid-price, you know, you start getting up into the 60s. It's yeah. like, all right. Just another one to add to my list. That's right. This ongoing, you know, future bankruptcy list. <laughs> <laughs> every bourbon out there you know right so well we are fans of this i guess if you can't tell so this has been a little new riff side-by-side -side shootout on the bourbon note i'm ben i'm greg thanks for watching cheers